Well, good evening, everyone. I know we've um, had lots of um, people asking lots of questions about the IB and what it means for Marici. So tonight is that opportunity to actually um, go through some information for you. Um, but like we do here at Marici for Everything, before we begin tonight, we acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land on which we gather the Ngunnawal people. And we live in abundance now thanks to the leadership shown by our first Australians who remain true and care for it. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the six religious orders uh, who's estab who established Marici College 59 years ago now um, and their vision and foresight and they are the shoulders that we stand upon today. As always in Marici tradition, we do start with a prayer. So um, if you would like to um, bow your heads or join me in the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear loving and compassionate God, we pray for teachers and parents as we guide and develop inquiring, knowledgeable and caring young people who help to create a better and more peaceful world through intercultural understanding and respect. As we live each day, we pray for those less fortunate, especially those who are hurting. May our children see themselves as responsible members of our community and see themselves as global citizens citizens. Open our hearts and minds to you so we may inspire our children to become active, compassionate and lifelong learners who understand that other people with their differences can also be right. Help us to become involved in ways that show them how deeply we care. Amen. 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 Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So welcome to our IB information evening and thank you for joining us. Uh, we are at a very exciting stage in our IB journey and wanted to share our plans with you and give you some information about how the IB will benefit your daughter and what it will look like at Marici. So from 2020, subject to successful authorisation, we will be the only Catholic and independent school in the ACT who offers both the IB Middle Years Program and the opportunity to also go into the Diploma Program. In the Canberra region, we have Catholic primary schools where students have engaged with the IB Primary Years Program. And once they have finished, at the moment, there is no existing way for them to continue that pathway of an IB Catholic education. And so we would like to continue in the IB philosophy and we will be filling that gap and providing a high quality international focused IB education. The International Baccalaureate, or the IB as I've already been calling it tonight, many of you are familiar with the terminology, is a global alternative to the state curriculums like the ACT high school certificate. The value of IB diploma students is being recognised by many Australian universities, including the top eight with universities like ANU offering IB students early entrance and bonus points, and some such as Macquarie University are even offering students unconditional offers due to their IB predicted grades. The IB will add options for our students as we will continue to provide the ACT BSSS tertiary and standard pathways for students in year 11 and 12, and it will come down to personal preferences as to which pathway your daughter will want to follow, an IB1 or a BSSS1 in years 11 and 12. I would now like to introduce Mrs Natalie Fairfax, our IB coordinator, to tell you more about the IB philosophy and about both programs that will be run here at Marici College. Please welcome Natalie. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Natalie. So I've been employed here since July to implement both middle years and the diploma program. So that's my key job here. And if you have any IB inquiries along the way, I'm your main point of contact for that. So hopefully I can help if you've got any individual questions that crop up. Uh, so please feel free to contact me at any time. So I just want to talk through a little bit about the IB philosophy. So we are going to be delivering two of the IB's four programs. They have the primary years program which is for primary schools, the middle years program, which for us will be for years seven to 10, and the diploma program for years 11 and 12. They also offer a career program, but nowhere in the ACT, and as far as I'm aware, nowhere in Australia offer that, because Australia has really good career programs that exist already. So that's not something that we're planning to look at just now. 
So it aims to develop an inquiry kind of based approach in students and their kind of philosophy is based on developing international mindedness and a sense of curiosity. Now, there are different requirements in both programs. So as I've said, the junior curriculum from years 7 to 10 has eight subject groups. And I'll talk to you a little bit about how those look here. And then the senior curriculum, and as I've said already, it's an option for students. So we're not making students go to, go to a diploma program. It will be something that they can choose to study. And there are six <coughs> subject groups in that. And you'll see that both of them centre around the IB learner profile. So the IB learner profile, if you already have students here, they've already engaged with the language of this. It's a set of attributes, and there are 10, and it's essentially character education. It's something we already do. It's nothing new, but we're calling it different things to align with the IB philosophy. So it includes things like inquirers, being caring, balanced, reflective, and in flex lessons already this year, students have engaged with different activities to try and get them familiar with some of the IB language so that they can become more fluent when they're talking about their experiences in using this terminology so it's a bit more consistent for them and they have a common understanding of what that looks like. It already aligns with what we have in our Mucci uh, Principles of Powerful Learning. And again, this is something that students have reflected on um, already. So over here you can see the principles of powerful learning that Mauritius College already had before they even thought about the diploma programme or the middle years programme. It's a set of ideas, things that Mauritius really believes in, in developing in students and staff. And this is the IB learner profile over here. And I've just highlighted one similarity here. The idea that we take responsible action on complex problems and exercise initiative in making reasoned ethical decisions. And it aligns really well with Christ-centred values on our Marici principles of powerful learning. So that's one of the key reasons that the school decided to go YB, is because it's not going to be revolutionary. It just aligns with what we already do. And I think that makes it really special. So it's based on good practice. The teaching and learning behind it is really well established. It's got a good history. It's internationally recognized. And I think that's something that we don't have in the ACT. When I've been overseas, nobody would have known about what the ACT is. Half the time they thought Sydney's the capital of Australia. And so this offers students something that people are aware of globally. And I think that makes it quite special. We're hoping that maybe it will attract some students to us who really want to focus on an IB education and to retain some students we already have because maybe they would have gone to another college had there been an IB option available here, they might have stayed. So we're hoping that we can retain some of our students who want the IB. We will, as Loretta said, be the only Catholic and independent option for both programmes. There are schools that are opting to deliver the diploma programme, but not the both packages. So that's really exciting. And we're actually a really affordable option. A lot of the time, the IB is associated with very expensive private schools, and we're offering something that whilst isn't cheap, it's still more affordable than some of the alternatives, and I think that puts us in a really good position to serve the needs of, um, of our community. It's also something that can be transferable. The middle years, not so much necessarily, because not everywhere offers the middle years programme, but if you're moving internationally and your children have started the IB diploma and suddenly a family might need to move, it's not a perfect fit if you need to go abroad. It depends on the school and it depends on what subjects your child's chosen but it's definitely much more transferable than the ACT system in terms of being able to still continue on a senior pathway. So in 2019, we are trialling the NYP. We have to, as part of our authorisation process, trial it to see how it goes. But essentially, the trial is the programme. We will be delivering the NYP, which is just a framework. So we're still teaching the Australian curriculum. We're not teaching any different content. We're still teaching what we teach. But the language will change, and there are a couple of different elements in terms of how we direct students to kind of focus on things that might make a difference to some of the choices they make. So we'll talk about the personal project later, but that's something that's really exciting in the Middle Years programme. 
There will be a change for students as they progress through the school in terms of the subjects that they might have to select, whereas at the minute they can have a bit more flexibility. We're aiming to still maintain some flexibility and choices, but in Year 7 and 8, the main choice they'll need to make is their language. Okay, and if they're coming in Year 7, the, the plan is that they will commit to that language and continue it throughout their NYP journey. So, for 2019, in Year 7, and thank you for those of you that came to the Year 7 open night, this is information you've already got, I'm afraid, but just so that everyone's aware, there are different groups, as I kind of mentioned, for the NYP, and they don't necessarily align with the familiar subjects at Marici. So what I've tried to do is to sort of align what the NYP calls subjects with what we already do here. So, for example, Group 2 Language Acquisition is essentially foreign language and integrated humanities, they don't offer that as a subject in the IB, but they have a really strong focus on making interdisciplinary links. And actually, I wrote to the IB support, and I said, oh, this is what we do here. And they actually wrote back and said that we might be an exemplary practice school once we get up and running, because we have already got very integrated courses. So I was personally pretty excited about that. Um, and down here, sorry, I'll just move out your way. You can see that this is a picture of how many lessons per week students currently have and will have in 2019 for each subject area. Year 8, slightly different because they don't have integrated maths and science and they don't have integrated English and humanities. So those have been split and religious education, just to highlight there, fits in both Year 7 and Year 8 into Group 3, Individuals and Societies. So that's where that subject sits within the um, NYP framework. So with languages, languages is compulsory from 7 to 10. It will be taught in phases. So essentially, if your child gets proficient in a language sooner than maybe year 10, there's options depending on <coughs> how they're going and what we can do with them for them to maybe take on another language if they're already proficient. Um, and also then they're not going to be put in a class where they're struggling because maybe they're taking language a bit slower. So the really good thing about the NYP is it really accommodates different paces of learning and different abilities of foreign language because I know some of the students coming here have a really strong language background already. So that's really exciting. Um, and as I said already, we are going to be delivering the Australian curriculum still. The benefits of the NYP. I really love the fact that it's really holistic and it focuses on things like character education as a core part of their focus. It is inquiry based and the interdisciplinary links that we already have are recognised as really valuable by the NYP. The thing that you'll probably see more of is the fact that we're going to be developing a bit more of our international mindedness so that you're, I'm going to be looking for the parent community to help me with that. Um, so that we can authentically celebrate different cultures and different experiences in a meaningful way so that we can recognise lots of our sort of diversity and our commonality. Um, and the breadth of programme of subject choices continues from the middle years into the diploma, which I'll talk about shortly. The personal project in Year 10 is one of the best bits about the middle years programme. It's free in terms of like where you can go with it. It's a process rather than an end result. And students, whether they have an interest in building rockets or if they have an interest in performing arts or whether they have an interest in music composition, they follow a set process for something that they're really interested in. And the really great thing is they get personally coached through that, that project in different stages. And it's all about inquiry and reflection and how they're going and what they've done along the way, as well as how they've done it, not just what they've produced at the end. So when I've had students go through the personal project, this is the big highlight for them of the NYP program, because they've had a lot of free independent choice with support and guidance along the way, but it really lets children have their passion and see where they're going with it, and they can just go wherever they feel like. And the NYP has the framework to support them through that, which is really great. So moving on to the diploma, this I said will be an option for years in years 11 and 12. So we'll go through course coaching with years, students in year 10 to make sure that they're really clear about what their options are and what's appropriate for them and what they want. 
We will not be teaching the IB Diploma Programme until 2020. We've had a consultation visit from uh, our consultant in New Zealand who visited us and said we're in a really good position at the minute in terms of our progress, which again, I was pretty excited about. And that involved also speaking with our students in Year 9 and with some of the parents. And the consultant was really positive about the school community here and where we're at with everything. So we're expecting maybe a small cohort between 8 and 20 students at diploma level. And depending on class sizes, those students may well be taught with BSSS students in the same classroom. Or in some situations, if there's a large enough number, they may well be taught in a discrete IB classroom. So, for example, um, I'll show you some data in a second, but there's two options for English. And the numbers are large enough that potentially they may well have their own class, but it very much depends on student numbers and student demand as to how we accommodate that. And our teachers have already worked on mapping some of those courses against the BSSS to see where there's alignment and how that can work. So there's already plans in place to try and work the best option. Now, in addition to students' subjects, they also have what the IB call as the core. And again, this is the MYP has the personal project, this is the kind of highlight, I think, really for IB diploma students. They have to complete a theory of knowledge course, an extended essay, and participate in what they call CAS, Creativity, Activity and Service. And I'll talk more about those as well. I just want to go through with you some of the <coughs> misconceptions and misinformation that's in the IB community, because often it's exactly that just a misunderstanding and I'm hoping I'll just <coughs> highlight these through now and then I'm really hoping that by the end of the talk you'll be like oh yes actually I completely understand that that's not quite the case so one thing the thing I hear most often is the IB diploma is so much work why would you do that okay and I will, I've got some hours and comparisons so you can see it's not that different to the BSSS in terms of amount of work Another common misunderstanding is that the IB diploma is only for the smart kids. I've taught a wide range of students through the diploma. Some struggle a lot with literacy, and they've still achieved their diploma and got a grade four. So the grading system for the IB diploma is from one to seven, and students have really done okay, and they haven't been the top students. So it isn't just for those top achieving students. However, organization is a bonus, and having an interest in wanting to do the IB diploma is something that's really important. And I'll talk through a bit about the assessment of how that works. But it isn't just for smart kids. It's for anybody that has an interest in studying this pathway. The exams are just about studying lots of content and you'll get examined at the end. You do get examined at the end of two years, but it isn't just about memorising lots of key facts. If you don't get your diploma, you've wasted time and money. You still end up with course scores as a diploma student if you don't get your diploma. And there are lots of other options that are available um, so that it's not a waste of time and money. And it's also not just for students that want to study internationally. As uh, Loretta said already, it's lots of students want to go on to universities in Australia. And those universities are really acknowledging the value of the IB diploma. And they're offering lots of different options available to students based on their predicted grades. So those predicted grades go to the universities, I think, around November time. And universities then put out offers based on that. So they haven't even sat their exams. And some students are getting offers based on that, which is very similar to the BSSS in some circumstances too. But it's good to know as parents that that's not ignored in the IB. You don't have to be good at languages. You do have to do languages, but you don't have to be great at them. The IB offers beginner level courses for students that have never studied languages as well. And this is, I put this on, this is a little bit abstract, but I've heard this quite a lot too. Um, the concept that if you want to do medicine and be a doctor, you have to do your three sciences. It's not necessarily the case. And I'll talk to you a bit about prerequisites for courses in a second as well so you can see how that works in the diploma so similar to the MYP the diploma program has a wide range of benefits 
This is a really good option for students that really don't know what they want to do. They don't have to choose a particular set of subjects. They're doing many different subjects, which gives them a breadth of choice. So it's really good for students with that. It's also good for students that want to get formal recognition for things they're already doing. So those students who are doing Duke of Edinburgh's award, for example, and doing community service, that can also doubly count in this regard as well for the community service and action section, the creativity, sorry, uh, activity service section. So they, and students doing Ruchi Angel Points and Angel Hours, I think, that, you know, students are already doing community service here. And I think that's also what makes it really special. So it's nothing new. It's something they can get recognition for. on that so I'm just kind of deciding if it's for you it's not just for those students that meet the things I've already said so you have to choose one subject from each of the six areas but instead of an art subject and I'm sorry it's the arts that's something I've been read why is it the arts I don't know I can't fix that but it's the art subjects that get and I'll show you how that works they kind of get slightly pushed to the side and I'll explain how that looks but it's, it's the art subjects. There are uh, subjects that are taken at higher level and there are subjects taken at standard level and there's 240 hours for higher level and 150 hours for standard level over the two years and there's some internal and some external assessment. So this is for years 11 and 12 some potential options we already here design the timetable around your students as best we can. We can't always please everybody. We try really, really hard, but essentially it's driven by student demand <coughs> and student preferences. <coughs> so we've recently surveyed the year nine and I'll show you some of the data from that. There are 27 responses for students that are interested in doing the IB diploma. They haven't signed contracts, but they're interested, which for someone that was expecting between 8 and 20, I'm like, wow, 27, how brilliant. Um, so essentially what happens is they choose one subject in each group, except here, individuals and societies, to meet our Catholic education requirement, rather than try and tag on something extra to their heavy study workload, we're making world religions compulsory. The BSSS students already do a religion course, so this will be the equivalent in IB. The issue with this, just to let you know, is then that won't set those subjects in this subject group. But don't worry, because they get put in group six, and this is what I mean by the arts. The arts we're looking to offer, based on the discussions we've had with students and what we currently offer, we're looking at visual arts and theatre, but if students don't want those two options, they get to choose anything else from groups one to five instead. So those students who want to do <coughs> second science, they choose their second science here. Those students who want to do double math, they can choose their second math here, or double language, or anything they want to do, they can do it here. I highlighted this one because obviously we're making this one compulsory, so that restricts choice in this, this group, but those options then offered here, and this is the data that we've had from the students so far and they have had quite a bit of discussion about the IB so they've done this survey based on some fair information but obviously the detail of the courses hasn't been provided to them so obviously there's this is an indication and we're using this to help us plan but it's not necessarily what we're completely offering so the numbers are the number of responses in this column and for these ones here I, I've listed their top two preferences, so we put all of the subjects in group six and we said out of all of those subjects, what are your five preferences in order of preference? And I took the top two from the survey <coughs> and I put those numbers in here. So key areas of demand seem to be uh, psychology and philosophy um, and psychology is often quite popular here anyway, so that really wasn't a surprise. Other areas, biology was very strong, but then also double science required, requests were quite heavy over here too. Um, and we don't currently offer Spanish at the college, but due to the discussions and 
anecdotal evidence and now data as well, there's quite a high demand for offering Spanish. I would like to say we could offer every language that your students want to study, but physically that's not possible. However, the IB does offer online options and we can explore that too, but the options currently aren't that wide. But I did meet with the Pomoja representative from who flew over from the UK to Australia and they are looking to expand and one of the areas is in the language area. So fingers crossed, if there's something that's not offered here, there might be some flexibility. But obviously they run their courses based on student demand as well. So as we come to 2020, we'd have a little look and see what's available and what's running. So there's some online options if we are needing them. But preferably, we would hope to meet all your needs here uh, so that we can support your, your daughters uh, more effectively. So that was just a bit of a snapshot of what students are already here. The, the 2020 cohort, the year nines, that's what they've provided us in terms of data. So I'm going to give you a very brief overview of the subject so that you're aware of some of the key differences. So language and literature um, has more of a language focus. There are a wider range of texts studied compared to literature, which is obviously more literature based, and students have to study a wider range of novels. Language acquisition, the Spanish, we're only really looking to offer it at what we call ab initio. So ab initio is the IB language for beginners, people with no experience of that language. If you studied it for a year in your primary school, chances are that would class as no exposure to the language. But again, that would be something that we could talk about. There's continuing, so I've put on here Italian continuing, French continuing, so students who have already studied those languages in year 7 and 8 may choose to continue in diploma, but they don't have to. If they want to take a different language and study it at a more basic level, they can choose a different language at Abinitio as well. So they're not stuck with the same language for like six years. There is some flexibility with that. Compulsory world religions. The course is only offered at standard level, so it's not a higher level course which means that it will be covered with the 150 hours. And I've just given you a bit of a snapshot of what that looks like. And obviously this will be studied in comparison to a Catholic perspective as well. Sciences, sports, exercise and health science comes under the science umbrella with the IB. And any science, well all science students, have to engage in what the IB <coughs> calls degree for projects. And that's somewhere where all science students come together to work on a common problem as a science student, which is, again, one of the other really exciting things about the programme. And maths. The maths courses are brand new for the IB. They've just rewritten the whole thing. But essentially, both courses will be offered at both standard level and higher level. Maths analysis is more theory-based. Um, and if you're into pure mathematics, that's probably the option you would take. Math applications is more applied mathematics. People who maybe want to go into sort of more social science backgrounds um, or futures would opt to go with math applications, and some may wish to study both. And the arts, I've already kind of explained that already, that you have a choice of art or something else. You can study two languages, you can study multiple sciences, you can't study art, visual art and theatre. So that is one of the limitations, you can't study two arts subjects there, unless, and this applies to students who think they really have to do three sciences, the IB does offer what they call a non-regular diploma, where if you can prove that the university is actually requiring it, not just recommending it, but requiring it, then we can apply to the IB for a particular exemption. But it's very hard and it's not very common. Um, but if that was something you've read it and you're like, this course definitely needs this, then don't just think it's not an option to do IB. Come and have a chat to me and we can look to see if that is something that we can work around and get the IB approval for. Um, where are we? Sorry. Theory of knowledge. This is where I'm going to introduce um, Stephen Powell, who we've appointed as our theory of knowledge 
facilitator. So welcome, Stephen. Thanks for the applause. I haven't even said anything yet. Um, and we're in the early stages of figuring out uh, what theory of knowledge is and what it will look like in our diploma program. Uh, but the reason I put my hand up for this role is I think it really matches very well with the International Baccalaureate um, Learner Profile, which matches well with everything that Marici College has been trying to do um, with uh, building inquisitive, creative, curious learners. So the theory of knowledge will be a course which all diploma students take. So we come together possibly twice a week, um, probably for semester one and two of year 11 and then semester one of year 12. That's probably what it will, will look like. And we have uh, mind-blowing discussions is the idea. This, this is supposed to challenge your brain to work in a different way by finding connections between all the other subjects that you study. So we talk about areas of knowledge which would be familiar. So we talk about um, different sorts of sciences, um, um, the maths, the literature approach to things, all of the different subjects. But we bring them together by saying, well, how do people who work in those areas figure out what they know? And can we test um, the validity of how they say that they know what they know? And we have de debates about it, and students do, do projects related to it, oral presentations to each other, and, and an essay based on something that they're curious about, and they want to know, you know, how do we know what we know? So it's, it's big picture thinking, it's kind of blue sky thinking in a sense, and it, it feeds into all of the other subjects that you do in the diploma. So to give you an idea of like how this fits with our philosophy, our idea is that we'll, we'll have three prongs to this. We'll have discussions amongst the students, we'll have experts from the Canberra community, hopefully including some parents coming along to tell us about how they work as a scientist or how they work as a lawyer, how they work in, in another field of knowledge. Um, and then also a lot of critical thinking exercises and games to, to work the brain in that way. So to finish, I'll just leave you with some of the questions that we think we'll be asking, which might stimulate you into thinking what this course will look like. We're proposing questions such as, in the human sciences, how do we explain human behaviour? Right, there's lots of different ways that we could break that down. We can talk about how we perceive information, the language we use to process information, and so on. Um, in the natural sciences, we'll say, how reliable is the scientific method? Is it objective? Does it involve any kind of bias and so on? We're talking about reason and perception in, in that, related to that. Um, under history, we'll say, who controls the past? Um, and we talk about memory and intuition and other ways of knowing that. And we work our way through with maybe four or five weeks per topic like that um, to really tease out what we know, how we know it, and how we can ask big questions that don't always lead to simple answers, but should lead to really interesting discussions. So that's the theory behind the theory of knowledge, um, which we'll be introducing from 2020 and really looking forward to it. Thanks. Thank you. And also, part of the diploma is the creativity, activity and service. And Corinne Preston is our CAS coordinator. So welcome, Corinne. Okay, as Natalie said, um, CAS is at the heart of the diploma program and it's designed to strengthen and extend students personally and interpersonally. CAS develops skills and attitudes and viewpoints through a variety of individual and group experiences and allows students to explore their own interests, their own talents and their own personalities. CAS is organised into three strands, so it's creativity, activity and service. Creativity is exploring and extending ideas to an original or an interpretive product or performance. So examples of that might be photography, running a tournament, organising an event, um, developing a website, or art lessons, just amongst a few. Activity encourages a healthy lifestyle and a balance in the, in, in the lifestyle of the students. And any activity like fitness club, tennis, any sporting activities that students might do, uh, trekking, they might do um, the Duke of Edinburgh, 
So all those sorts of activities would be um, leading into the activity strand of the CAS program. And the last is a service. We already do the service program very, very well here in, in Marici with the students achieving their, their angel wings um, according to the hours that they, they um, contribute. So I don't think that that's a hard one, but for creativity and activity and service, if we're thinking the diploma program, we can extend those girls again a little bit more, and they can organise things like a Clean Up Australia Day. They can be more involved in, say, peer tutoring, or um, being involved in a local community. It involves a one-month project, but it is encouraged that the students will do this over, over the two years but specifically a one month progress, which they design themselves and, and can either do it individually or as a team. And they can combine either one or have one of the strands or they combine two or three of the strands. An example of that would be, um, for instance, if we have a fitness club here, if a student was to um, organise the, 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 the club itself, design the program um, and implement it, that would be encouraging all three strands. Uh, another example would be where the students might get together and they rehearse and perform a dance or a performance for a community retirement group. So it's a really, um, it's a, a beautiful holistic program that students are involved in and it encourages that balance of, um, of, of students developing their own personalities and really coming through their creativity and their personality coming through. Thank, Thank you. you. I promise I'm not going to keep you too much longer. Now the extended essay, this is probably, if I'm honest, one of the things that worries diploma students the most. It's a 4,000 word research essay. But when they've finished it, they often report back again that this is one of the most beneficial preparations for university and some of the most rewarding processes they've been through. They will get an individual supervisor that will help them and guide them through the process of that in terms of developing questions and doing the research and how to do that. So they're not just left here, go write a project. And they, they coach through it. Um, there will also be some dedicated extended essay time. It's not going to be put on the timetable, so students wouldn't see that as one of the lessons that they have in the week, but there will be time given to help those students through that process. Now the core, the CAS, the TOC and the extended essay, all these three things have to be completed in order for students to get their diploma. <coughs> and there's a certain performance in those areas that they need to reach in order to get that counted. Now parents, this is something that often I get asked about, so I have put this information up. But this is based on, I think it's 2019 data, and this does vary every year marginally. So it doesn't make huge changes, but it does vary. So IB students at Marici College will do the BSSS or the IB. They're not doing both. Some places have done that or do that. We're not doing that. And there's no need for them to do that. So essentially, what they will get, they don't do the AST. They will just get a converted score. So they don't get an ATAR, but what they get is a university kind of ranking that's equivalent to the ATAR. Now, for those of you in year seven to nine, you're sitting there thinking this is a long way away, but I just wanted to highlight, because I know that as parents, often this is something that is in the back of your mind for your children. And essentially, um, in terms of assessment and points, subjects are given grades one to seven in each subject area. So students have to study six subjects over the two years, and that adds up to 42, and then they get three points for their core subjects as a total, three points. If students get 33 or above, they will get an ATAR of 90 or above. So actually, it converts really well for them in terms of getting quite a high ATAR. So I won't go into that in too much detail because especially for students that are here, you're like, whoa, that's so far away. But this presentation will be on the website. And so if you do want to go through that in a bit more detail, or if you want to ask me any questions at the end or the other staff here, then we can explain that a bit more to you. But it's not an ATAR, 
but it's pretty much the same as one. And I really did want to let you know they're not doing both programs here, so it's going to be one or the other. Uh, this is a bit of a snapshot of ours, and again, I'm not going to go through every single piece of this, but to go through the myth about the IB being heaps of extra work, in the ACT system, it's really not that different. Okay, so for a BSSS student, they're essentially in class completing about 1,210 hours over two years, and for IB students, they're essentially doing about 1,360 so there isn't too much over the two years in terms of hours, and this is very simplistic in terms of a calculation, but one thing that is quite clear is the amount of assessment items between an IB diploma student and a BSSS student is very different. So approximately, because some exams have, some subjects have maybe three exams and two pieces of internal assessment, and some maybe only have two, so approximately, you're looking with the IB at 24 assessment items over the two years, where the BSSS, you're looking around 66. So when you're looking at hours, yes, there is a slight difference, but actually there's a big difference in the number of assessment items. So the BSSS, you complete your assignments and assessments all the way along, so everything you do counts. The IB counts in a different way, everything you do counts, but it's assessed at the end. And this is a bit of a comparison, I know there's a lot of words on there, and so don't worry, it will be on the website, um, between the two programs so that you can see what the benefits are and what the kind of issues might be. So essentially, the BSSS assessment is ongoing, whereas it's assessed mostly at the end of the diploma. Um, this is the, the diploma is assessed mostly externally, so even the things that are marked by teachers will go for a sample to external moderation usually, um, whereas the BSSS is usually marked by teachers at the school and then moderated in a team of teachers each semester. Um, so you won't be able to do a mixed package as such on the IB diploma pathway. The BSSS offers vocational options, um, apprenticeship options, a combination of standard and uh, tertiary and accredited courses. The IB has higher level and standard level courses, but they don't offer some of the flexibility that the BSSS has. What you will find that if your, if your child really does have a very specific passion for subjects and they don't fit discreetly into the IB options, then maybe this might be better for them. But if they really want a breadth of subjects and they really enjoy the things like the theory of knowledge uh, course and some of the other components, then the diploma is maybe the best route for them. But they won't be on, and you guys won't be on your own to look through this. You'll be coached and have meetings. Those meetings already happen, but it will ha have another aspect to it, which will be the IB consideration as well. One of the key things I get asked is how much is it going to cost? And so, whilst we still are in the early stages, essentially IB students that take the diploma exams will be charged for their exams. So whilst the college fees will be the same for everybody, the diploma cost will be slightly more, but it's only for the exams and there won't be a charge for the, like, the enrolment fee. Um, this is a very raw figure as well, because if students um, have late submissions and things like that. There are other IB penalties that we have to pay, but the, the basic costing is $140 um, for each subject for the exams. And another key thing is once you start the IB, you're committed to it. If it's not your thing, it is possible to move back to the BSSS system at different points, but you'll be treated as an interstate candidate. And again, if you have some questions about that, then we can maybe try and answer those at the end. Um, but it's not really possible, once you start on the BSSS pathway, it's not really possible to move to IB because essentially the content will be really hard to catch up on and it's examined externally. There may be a few weeks that we can work around, so it's not like day one you, you have to commit to it, but it's not like you can change at the end of semester one unless you really want to go and resit year 11 the following year. So it, it's not necessarily as free to move around 
between the two courses as it might seem. And then why not the diploma? I obviously love the IB. I love the middle years, I love the whole program, I love the diploma, but it's not for everybody. So again, it's really based on personal choices and personal discussions, um, and that's something that we can help you with. So I'm not here saying we want to brainwash you to IB, you have to do IB. It's really, we really want the best for you and your families, and whatever option that is, we hope to get them there. So just a bit of a summary between the kind of middle years program and the diploma program in terms of some of the things that might look different. There'll be more compulsory areas, but there'll still be electives in some of the uh, options in years 9 and 10. We'll be changing our language, so we'll be talking about the IB learner profile, what we call things like approaches to learning uh, and key concepts. So you might hear some different words, and obviously the personal project in year 10 is completely new. Personally, I think it's the best bit. And the diploma, there's a requirement for the additional things that sometimes are optional at the minute. More emphasis on the exams at the end of the two years and compulsory range of subjects. And thank you for being so patient and listening. That is essentially the formal presentation and the staff will be here if you've got questions. I don't have all of the answers yet, um, but what we can answer we will and what we don't know yet we will tell you and we can get back to you. But um, thank you. For listening thank you for coming and I'm really excited about this uh, and hope that you are too because that's why you're here so I know that we've got a whole range of people from prospective parents from primary schools through to current students and parents so welcome to everybody and thank you for coming and, and finding out a bit more about the IB